Well, for more on these Schengen talks taking place this Thursday, let's bring in our international affairs commentator, Armin Georgian, who's with me here on set. Uh, Armin, first of all, just why have we seen uh, opposition from Austria to uh, these proposals? Just what should we read in to that? Well, Austria says it's on the receiving end of uh, an increase in the number of migrants using the Western Balkans route, for example, uh, people crossing the border from Turkey, which is a non-EU member, into Bulgaria, which is an EU member. Uh, and actually, it's not only Austria, because the Netherlands also got into a spat with Bulgaria, the government of the Netherlands saying that it was essentially very easy for a migrant to cross that border from Turkey into Bulgaria and then make his or her way further into the European Union. That led to a sharp response in Sofia. Uh, but ultimately, uh, Thomas, several EU countries are concerned about uh, the numbers of migrants coming in to the EU from this Western Balkans route. Let's take a look at some figures from uh, Eurostat. Uh, so this is uh, the latest figures that are available. If we can show you that graphic, um, this is from uh, November, uh, data extracted in November, uh, but dating back to August. So in August, we saw 77,500 first-time asylum applicants asking for the for protection in the EU. That was 11,000 more than in the previous month in, in July, which made for the highest monthly number since 2016. And in the background of all of this, you have to remember the migrant crisis of 2015 to 16. Many EU governments remember that vividly and are worried about the political consequences of any major increase along whichever migrant route it may be. In this case, it is, the, as I said, the Western Balkans route. Now, Armin, for people watching who might be uh, seeing this word Schengen uh, on screen and people that might not know what that means, just what is this zone and what are the benefits of joining it? Well, it's the largest uh, free travel area in the world. Um, the EU considered that it's, think, considers it to be one of its main achievements. So you can see here uh, on this map in yellow, uh, countries that are in the Schengen zone and in the European Union. But there are some other countries as well which are not in the EU but are members of Schengen. So you can see them in, in blue there. Um, and then you've got uh, in green on the bottom right hand corner, uh, Bulgaria and Romania. And then you can just see a little slither, um, the, the red colored country there, which is Croatia. So I've put that in a different color because the decisions today will center on uh, Croatia's bid to join Schengen. But the bottom line is, uh, Thomas, that every day 3.5 million people cross these internal borders. They can live, work and travel in another EU country without going through border controls. So the argument for proponents of this is that it boosts economies, it boosts tourism and so forth. Uh, the obvious shortcoming, of course, is in times of crisis like I mentioned, 2015 to 16, when there's pressure on the EU's external borders, that's when internally things become very difficult politically. Okay, Armin Georgian, thank you very much. Thank you.